Hi, in this tutorial, we'll be showing you how to create dynamic panels with inside NetBeans for a Java application. Now, dynamic panels can be used to switch between one J panel and another. So, for instance, you might display specific information on one J panel, wish to close it and open a separate one. So, an example of this is this one I have right here. So, it starts off with a landing page as if you're entering a game. Press enter, and it takes you onto the home screen saying welcome. Now, um, just to demonstrate what else you could do with this, I can also go back to that same page by pressing back and it closes that J panel and opens up the previous one. So now, let me show you how that's done. So to begin with, I'll create a new application. Inside this application, I want to create a new J frame. On that J-frame, I'm going to go ahead and set the size of it. Now I'll right click it, properties, and set the preferred size so it's standard. So control C on that, the maximum size, paste it in, and there too. And that sets that size. So now if you see, if I change the size of the J-frame, it snaps into place at default, which is what I'm looking for it to do. Next, we're going to go ahead and drag in a J panel. So, onto your swing containers on the top right. If your swing containers aren't there, you can be onto Window. And then on Window, it says Reset Windows. Just press that and you should find your swing containers comes up as default. So, move onto your panel and drag it on top of your J frame. And resize it so it's appropriate. So, now we've brought in that J panel. I'm going to go ahead and change the variable name. And then bring it under the J panel. And resize it. And in the property section, you can go ahead and change the color if you'd like to. also change its border great now click that J panel change variable name Now this J-Panel I've just created will be the landing J-Panel, meaning when you start up the GUI, it'll be the first panel you see, and it has an enter button located in the center, allowing you to go through into the application. So, next you want to go ahead and click your highest J-Panel, meaning the parent J-Panel. So click onto that one, right click, set layout, card layout. Great. Now click background J panel again. Drag in another panel. This one is going to be our home J panel. Let's go ahead and resize it. And yet again, we can go, oh, in my case, this probably will happen to you as well. You can see it's snapped onto landing J panel and going through it. So it's gone through background onto landing and then onto J panel. So if you click it, we can drag it back up to the landing, and there we go. It's now in line with it. It's no longer a subclass of landing panel. It's still a subclass of background J panel. So on that class, on that panel, click it and change the variable name. And change the background color. Great. Now on this panel, all we want is a welcome message. So we'll label. Let's so change the font. And size. And we're going to add in a button. So the purpose of this button is it allows us back to the landing screen. 
Um, so this is just a demonstration of it. Obviously, you could do whatever you like with it, but it just shows you some sort of navigation through one J panel to another. Then yet again, as I did before, change the variable name. So on that button. Great. There's our home page done. Let's go back to the landing J panel. Create an enter button. And then change the variable name again. So now all our components in place, all we need to do is initialize all the code to switch the J panels. So to start off with, all I'm going to do is memorize some of your different J panels. So my landing J panel is my original home screen. So let's go into the button for that. So if you right click, events, action, action performed and it takes you onto the source section of the GUI so on that source section I want to go ahead and delete the code there type in name of your panel so mine was landing landing J panel and then set to visible There we go. So that tiny piece of code tells the original J panel, being this one here with the enter, to disappear. So we need to first set it as false for it to disappear before we can set to the initialize the other one. So now it's set as false, so it's going to open the second one. So the second J panel is home. There we go. So that's set that when we click on the action events, being the button, it will close down this J panel and open up the second one. Now all we want to do is set the second navigation to go back to exactly the same. Button, events, action, action performed, opens up the button. So we start off by closing down the J panel we're currently on. And then open up the one to the J panel we want to head towards. Save. The final step we can do, which isn't doesn't necessarily have to be included in this tutorial, is just to initialize the GUI inside our main class, our main method, sorry. So to do this, go ahead and copy this piece of code and cut it out and just simply delete this main method inside of the GUI. And then head over to your original um, class you initiated when you created this new package. And in that main method, paste in that piece of code you just cut out and save it. Now all that does is it tells the initial application, your main method, when you run the Java application to open your GUI. So, if you run it from your starter class, the GUI will open up automatically, as you can see here. So now I'm in my main method, I press run, and my GUI opens up. So, let's go and see if the code works. Press enter, takes me onto my home page. Press back, back onto the landing page, and there you have it. That's how you create dynamic panels inside NetBeans for a Java application. I hope it's been as thorough as possible as always, and hopefully you've enjoyed it. Until next time, goodbye.